With drones becoming more high-tech than ever, it was only a matter of time before someone came up with one that featured a VR headset. I love that the Ehan Ghost Drone 2.0 VR makes you look like the king of the nerds, but is this headset a gimmick or a genuine feature from the future? The Ghost Drone comes with a VR headset, which provides first-person view via the gimbaled camera. The phone and the drone connect to a Wi-Fi signal that's broadcast from the headset. It's the middleman between your smartphone and the drone. This also means that you have to have the headset with you at all times, even if you're not planning on using it. And I'm super afraid of heights. Seriously, I can't even watch it here. In terms of battery life, you should get 20 to 25 minutes per charge, although that will depend on the speed of the drone as well as the weather conditions. If the drone has to constantly correct due to high winds, it'll run out of battery much faster. But don't worry, if the battery does die mid-flight, it'll use the built-in GPS to automatically land from the spot which it originally took off from. When it comes to video, 4K at 24 frames per second is possible but you're able to shoot in smaller formats as well. In terms of video quality, we were fairly impressed by the color reproduction and the amount of detail provided. Although with an aperture of f2.8, the quality of the video does decrease with the amount of light. If you'd like to take cinematic shots but don't know how, no worries, there are some built-in functions. Orbit lets you lock the drone on a single point, and then it takes a circular video that offers some really nice pans. It has a 93 degree wide angle lens, which provides a grander image than a standard lens. The curvature is noticeable when you're panning though. Ehung prides itself on the fact that anyone with little or no experience can fly the Ghost Drone 2.0 VR. And we actually really agree with this. It comes with many accompanying video tutorials that will help you with any queries you might have. There are also two flying modes, Waypoint and Manual. The app recommends that you complete at least three flights in Waypoint before you go into Manual mode. Even if you have flying experience, it's great because it gives drone operators, new and old, the opportunity to become familiar with the drone and the app. Waypoint mode is incredibly easy to use and is recommended for novice users. It leaves you free to control the camera to get your perfect video or photo. There's also a follow me mode that works quite well, but it feels a little gimmicky. And if you're not into extreme sports, then it's not of much use. Many drones use smartphones as controllers. The manual mode is where things start to get interesting. Ehung uses a built-in gyroscope to control the drone, which actually makes sense because you just kind of lean it to the right or left and the drone goes in that direction. This method actually really makes sense when you use the VR headset because, well, you can't be looking down at the controls if you want to fly your drone. So the way we ended up using the headset the most was one person would fly the drone and then one person would use the VR headset to control the camera. We were impressed with the Ghost Drone 2.0 and its app. We're not quite sure that the extra 450 for the VR headset is worth it, especially because you can't leave it behind. The quality of the headset also isn't that great and it's not very comfortable to wear and the displays inside are kind of low resolution. The drone itself is great to fly, it's zippy and seems to have no trouble getting around or maintaining its stability and win. Even if it is a little expensive, it's perfect for first time flyers. The quality video is also good even though low light isn't its strength. We would still open up our wallets for this futuristic drone. Have any questions? Let me know in the comments. As always, I'm your host Nicole Scott for Mobile Geeks. Bye.